So we've made this user object right now with methods and properties. But what if we wanted more than just one user object? Well, we've seen that what we could do is create several different user objects like this, one for each different user. But notice we're repeating ourselves a lot. We've rewritten the login and logout functions several times, these properties several times, and quickly this could get out of hand. What if instead I wanted an easier way to create a user object? What if I wanted to do something like this? I could say var user four is equal to a new user and then just pass in some parameters over here like so. Well, we can do this and we can do this in a couple of different ways. Now, one way is to use the prototype model, but with the release of ES6, we gained a little syntactic sugar so that we can solve this problem using classes as well. Now, under the hood, classes essentially do the same thing as working with prototypes in JavaScript. But some people think that classes are nicer or easier to work with, and they do look neater as well. However, not everyone likes this new class syntax, since JavaScript as a language doesn't really have classes built into it. So this is just some syntactic sugar which emulates the idea of classes in JavaScript. And under the hood, classes are just doing the same thing as the prototype model. So we'll focus on classes for now and try to keep it simple to begin with, but I will also add on some lectures towards the end of this series about what's actually going on under the hood using prototypes, because I think by understanding what's going on behind the scenes, it's gonna make you a much better developer. So anyway, back to the problem at hand. If we only ever need one type of object, then something like this would do, just making an object literal. Right, But if we ever want to create multiple versions of the same type of object like this, we want to create several different users, then what we're going to do is use a class to do that instead of manually creating several different object literals like we have done right here. Because a JavaScript class allows us to easily create multiple objects of the same type by doing something like this. So you can think of a class in JavaScript as a bit like a blueprint that describes a particular object in a non-specific way. For example, a class that describes a car would have a color property and every car would have that property. It would have a color. So we define those properties in our class for the car, our blueprint for the car, but we don't say what color the car is because that is specific to each individual instance of that class. So when we create a new instance of this class, we're creating a new car object. And then at that point where we create it, we pass to the class a parameter, which is the color of that car. We can say, okay, we want to use the car class to create a red car or a blue car or a green car or a purple car and so forth. We can easily create these car objects using the car class and we pass in that color each time around. So they're all the same type of object, they're all cars, but they all have different property values. They all have a color, but with a different value. In the same way, we could have a class for a user. So a user has an email address, a name, maybe a status to say whether they're online or offline, that could be true or false. They also have a login method and a logout method. Now, whenever we create a new user, we're gonna use this class and we're gonna pass in the values of these different things right here. So we could create user one and pass in these values and user two and pass in these values. In both cases, these objects that we're creating for each individual user is using this user class, but they're different instances of that object. They have different values. They have the same property names, email, name, status, login and logout. So they have all the same kind of mechanics under the hood, but they have different values. So what we're gonna be doing is using a class to create instances of that type of object. Okay, so let's keep it simple to begin with and just create an empty class. So we'll get rid of all of this junk that we've written over the last couple of lessons and instead create one single class. Now, the way we do this is by saying, first of all, the keyword class that says we want to create a class then the name of the class itself. Now convention says that we start this with an uppercase letter. So I'll call it user with a capital U. 
then we open and close our curly braces. And this right here, this is now an empty user class. So it's set up and ready to go. And we can start adding properties and methods to this class in the next video.